their policy and its impact on the economy. Hopefully between now and the end of this month, or first week in June, we will have qualified applicants that will move to the next stage. And these qualified applicants, one of our criteria is that they must have project development experience and the technology they are bringing to harness these flaggers in over 178 flag locations in Niger Delta are in commercial applications. So we're not looking at people that will just come and take permit and won't do nothing. We want serious-minded businessmen, and which is why, as part of our design, we've included receivables. So you post a bond to demonstrate your, your seriousness on this, and of course you must have partnership with these technology providers to make sure that you are serious about what we're doing, because government wants to address this issue once and for all. And we've said it, and Mr. President has hinted it, that gas flooding is no longer acceptable. If you've been observant, in the last two, three weeks, um, electricity supply has fallen to some of its lowest that we know uh, post privatization. In fact, it took us back to the um, old, as they say, NEPA era. But this has largely been due to ga gas constraints. And the gas constraints arise from, the gas producers will tell you, unclear policies about how they get paid. Gas is still regulated uh, to the detriment of the industry, the gas price, I mean. Consequently, the generating companies don't have enough gas to fire their plants. Now, when you pass that challenge, you then get into the transmission brouhaha with TCN. Most of the equipment are obsolete, so they have their own challenges. Then it comes to the discos, um, who too also have their own challenges. Now, if you look at all of this value chain, because we use two-thirds of our power comes from the thermal plants, gas is the one at the source of it. So getting a clear understanding will enable lawyers when they find themselves in advisory positions, whether you are the minister, whether you are the legal advisor, whether you are the consultant, to get those who are in charge of this policy to understand that the inability to get clear thinking and clear legislation is hindering investments. For us as the Nigerian Gas Association, a lot of the advocacy we are doing now is to say that whatever the history has been as to why we haven't fully optimized our gas resources, it's important that all parties, government, private sector, the legal sector, who have a huge role to play, uh, we are coming on board in a collaborative manner to fast track the potentials. Our country is in a very different place from where we used to be decades back. Just looking at our population dynamics already tells you that we have a huge constraint. We wait, we're waiting for a social implosion unless we do something about all the youth that we have. How do we achieve this? We want to use gas as um, a resource for gas-based industrialization. We want to see across all the sectors, whether it's agriculture, whether it's transportation, where all these able-bodied youths can be engaged in a productive manner. And we want to take Nigeria away from this dependency on the oil revenues.